Hello, welcome to part one of Corona Calculus. Today we'll be learning about the first topics in calculus, which are limits. So in this video, we'll cover the limit definition, epsilon delta proofs, and further theorems and the proofs of these theorems. So to start off, by definition, a limit would be when you have a function, say f of x, the limit as x approaches a certain value, we'll call it c, of f of x will equal to this certain value l. So this means that, well, in a certain limit, let's just say we have f of x equals to cosine of x. Um, so the limit as x approaches 1 of cosine of x would equal to cosine of 1. All right. This is very intuitive here. However, if we do the limit as x approaches infinity of cosine of x, we don't really know what this is. Because as we know, cosine x um, is periodic. So as x approaches infinity, this limit does not exist. Okay, so now to the formal definition of a limit. So when we say that the limit as x approaches c of a function of x equals to l, we're saying that there ex uh, for any epsilon, greater than zero, there exists a delta such that zero is less than absolute value of x minus c, which is less than delta, implies, so this must imply that the absolute value of f of x minus c is less than epsilon. So let's, um, that's the formal definition. Let's think about this. So let's draw a picture first. So say we have a function f, okay? And our c is right here. So this would be f of c, right? So epsilon, we want that for any epsilon, we can choose any epsilon such that there is a delta where x minus c is within that delta. So delta would be the bounds around this c. So this would be c plus delta, c minus delta. And then this. This is f of c here. And this would be f of c plus epsilon and f of c minus epsilon. All right, so what we're saying is, as this interval epsilon, for however small of an epsilon here we have, we're saying that no matter, no matter what, we will be able to find a delta bounded around c 
such that these values between them here will lie within this epsilon bound. Um, it's basically saying that as you get smaller and smaller and smaller difference of uh, epsilon closer to your value f of c, the values around f of c must approach f of c. Okay. Um, sometimes when you have f of c minus delta epsilon and f of c plus epsilon, you will get two different deltas. One delta might be closer to c versus another delta. For this definition, you can simply just take the smaller delta so that the bounds will match correctly. Okay, so let's have an example. So let f of x equal to 1 when x is rational and 0 otherwise or irrational. Okay, so if we want to find um, the limit as x approaches an irrational number, so limit as x approaches k, where k is irrational. f of x equals to, well, we know that between every irrational and rational, there must lie an irrational. However, between every irrational and irrational, there must lie also rational. So as we approach f of x, or sorry, f of k, and closer and closer and closer, we don't really know what values we will have. We can either have irrational or rational values as we get closer to x approaching k. So therefore, we don't have a certain value that we're approaching. So this limit does not exist.